Okay, now we're going to use a stack to uh, solve a problem of converting decimal to binary and uh, other bases. So binary is especially important to computer science and programming uh, because computers store everything in binary, ones and zeros. Um, although it's really hard to work with actual ones and zeros, so a lot of programmers work in hexadecimal or hex, uh, which is easier to use than binary. Uh, because it has a short number of digits. It's like uh, 0 through 10, uh, the digits 0 through 9, but they add on these extra digits A, B, C, D, E, and F. So you actually group groups of four binary digits. Each group of digits of four produces one hexadecimal digit. Uh, by the way, the hexadecimal code will be the new way you do IP addresses um, on the new internet. So let's look at how you convert to base 2 and we'll talk about just bases in, in general. So what a base for a number means, if it's a decimal number, it's in base 10. Sometimes that's represented by putting a, a, sub, a, a lowercase 10 here. And so the no normal number you use, 233, three, can be equivalently expressed in binary as this number. And the way the digits work this goes back to beginning arithmetic. Uh, you have the zero digit, the ones digit, the twos, the tens, wait, you have the zeros digit, the tens digit, and the hundreds digit in binary. So let's look at how the digits actually correspond here to the base. Uh, so this in decimal, which is the uh, uh, base 10, this is called the the ones digit, the tens digit, and the hundreds digit, because this represents how many hundreds, how many tens, and how many ones. In binary, it works the same way, except it's base two, so this is the ones digit, the twos digit, the fours digit, the eights digit, so it goes up uh, by multiplying by two to get each successive digit, just like the tens goes up by multiplying by ten. So you can write this out in algebra. The number 233 three, three is actually 2 times 10 to the second power, plus 3 times 10 to the first power, plus 3 times 10 to the zeroth power. And for binary, you have 2 to the seventh, 2 to the sixth, 2 to the fifth, 2 to the fourth, where you have each digit multiply. Notice some digits are just the term is 0, because you're multiplying by 0. So those are these digits multiplied out, you have 7 all the way down to who to the 0th, which is 1, and so that gives you the actual values. So there's an easy algorithm to do this. Uh, if you're converting to binary, what you do is you divide by 2 and collect the remainders of when you divide by 2. So here's how it works. You're going to be doing two operations. You take the original number and you divide it using integer divide by 2 and you get a new number. And that new number is going to go in the next operation. Uh, but then you take the original number and you get the remainder by doing modulus 2 and you get a remainder of 1. So because that's an odd number. And so you push the 1 onto a stack. Okay. And then the, the uh, after the first operation you're down to 116 which is the number remaining after you divide by 2. Uh, you divide that by 2, you get 58, so you're going to use that in the next step, you save it, and then you get the remainder of 116 uh, doing that divide, which is using the modulus. And you're going to get a 0, and it happens because that's even, so you push the 0 on the stack. You keep doing that until you get to 0 as the when you do the divide, you're all done. So, and as you've been doing that, you've been pushing these numbers on the stack. So you pushed a 1, a 0, a 0, a 1, a 0, a 1, a 1, a 1. So what happens, you've been pushing these numbers on the stack going in this direction, but to actually read them out as a binary number, you go the opposite direction. You reverse the numbers. So now you just pop everything off the stack and put it into a string, and you're going to have uh, binary, the binary value. So let's look at the code for that. And the code is going to be a method called divide by 2. You give it a number, and it's going to return a string, which is going to be a series of 1s and zeros, which will be the right representation for this number. 
Now I took the code that's in the book and I just uh, modified it. Here we go, divide by two. So basically I used more modern Python where variables are always names separated by uh, underscores. And uh, so you'll see divide by two, you give it a number, you build a stack. While the uh, decimal number is greater than zero, so that's going to keep going until you're done. What it's going to do, it's get the remainder of the root numbers, so that's going to be a one or a zero. It pushes that onto the stack and then divides the number by two and replaces decimal number with that, then it loops again. So this is going to keep doing a smaller and smaller number as it divides by two. When this loop is all done, uh, it's now going to pop the stack and build a string. So it says while the stack is not empty, uh, the string that I already started with, which is empty, is going to be that empty string or whatever's in it, plus the new thing I popped, I pop from the stack and convert it to a string. So that concatenates it. And so it's going to be keep adding these to the right of the string so it'll build a binary number. Then just returns that. So it's pretty simple. Uh, so you'll see it, this is what he does in the book. He just divides, he calls it for 42. So I print that out. Uh, let's see. Let me run it. So you see 42 is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And so that matches what they have in the book. And I just have a, some asserts for easy ones. When you're writing a program, you should always test it. So think about when you think about test cases, you want to have some test cases you know the answer to. Uh, so I know that 2 is a binary 1, 0. That's pretty easy. Uh, because I work with binary a lot, I know a byte uh, that's just one less than the length of the byte is 255. So that's going to be eight ones. And I know if I take eight, and add one to it, I'm going to have the 8-bit set and the 1-bit set. So here's a four binary digits. This is the 8-bit, the 4-bit, the 2-bit, and the 1-bit. So only the 8-bit and the 1-bit are set. So those are some easy things I can check. Uh, I assert that the those are true. So all of these expressions should be true. And uh, it doesn't print that I have any errors, so I know the assertions have passed. Okay, now let's look at expanding this to do a little more work. So if we think about it, uh, we can actually convert to any base. So if we want to convert to base 8, for example, we can divide by 8 to get the remainder and get the remainder using i modulus 8. So in a particular base, the modulus operator can return the last digit of any number in that base. So you get the, the, the original number modulus to the base will give you the last digit. And it turns out if you do divide, and I should have had two slashes here in Python. But if you do integer divide or the number remaining by the base, you get a new remaining number. So we can modify the code to do this uh, that we already had. And we'll just show you the code from the book here. So this is called base converter. Works the same way you pass it an original number and the base you want to convert to. And it has a string here with the digits for up to base 16. So it'll handle everything from the, uh, just the digits 0 and 1 for base 2, 0 through 10 if we want to convert it to base 10, and 0 to f if we want to convert it to 16, and everything in between. So it builds a stack. It loops through doing the numbers, but you see it's getting the remainder of the base and dividing by the base every time through the loop. When it's all done, it just puts all those digits onto the string and returns it. So it's very similar to the other method and I print out 3 here, I convert the number 26 to base 2, base 8, and base 16. So let's run this. There you go. So this is a great way to use a stack to make things uh, really simple to convert uh, from one, from any base to a particular base and display it that way.